What's good Raider Nation? Today I want to talk about the Oakland Raiders starting offensive line. Now going into week three this will be our starting unit. Of course Richie Incognito who was playing left guard is out the first two weeks due to suspension. Uh, filling in for him uh, is kind of up. We'll kind of see what happened. Denzel Good has been reactivated. Uh, so maybe he steps in. Maybe Jonathan Cooper. We'll kind of see what happens. Uh, but I want to break down all six plays of the Oakland Raiders starting offensive line. Uh, starting with this play. Now this is a power play. I'll let you guys watch it. Uh, and then we'll kind of break it down. I'll slow it down just as the play kind of starts. Um, you guys are going to see that Richie Incognito pulls to his right. He stays low. Very nice block. And we pick up six yards. The thing I most love about this play is is we're showing that we're going to pound the ball when the season starts we're going to pound the ball and that's what our team needs to do to win so what i want to do now is actually want to break down each of these blocks uh, and, and we'll kind of go over it uh, of course as you guys know we have colton miller at left tackle we have darren waller in as well as foster moreau uh, we have richie incognito rodney hudson um, and then at right guard we have jordan Devy, who is supposed to be our starting guard going week one uh, Denver Kirkland's fighting for that job, but I doubt Kirkland wins. Kirkland's a pretty bad guard, in my personal opinion. Uh, and then we have Trent Brown. So I want to talk about all these guys and just kind of how this play works, right? Uh, first and foremost, as the play kind of begins, uh, if you watch Trent Brown, watch him flat out dominate the guy in front of him. I mean, he's going to just hit him and push him back. Now, there is a slight double team, as you guys kind of see right there. Uh, but Trent Brown, I mean, look at this. He's just a big, big, nasty offensive tackle. And I couldn't be more excited about him. You know, I think he's bringing so much to the Raiders. Paying him, is it's, it's worth it. Even if he ends up giving up five, six sacks, it's not a really it's really not that big of a deal because he makes up for it in the running game as you guys see him dominating this defensive tackle um, and this is what he's going to bring to the raiders now the, the he did kind of get off balance a little bit not a huge deal uh, but it's still a really nice block in my opinion uh, by trent brown and then if you watch colton miller he kind of backside blocks this it's really hard to tell from this angle uh, but this defensive lineman is, you'll see it, he's going to shift as well. But he's going to be on the inside of Colton. Believe it or not, that's actually a pretty hard block for Colton Miller to make. Um, now, as you guys see, Colton kind of is able to get in front of the guy and just hold him off. Again, Miller has the backside block. Uh, same with Hudson. Hudson's filling Richie Incognito, as you guys see, who pulls. Um a good backside block by the two guys. Moreau does a pretty nice job here on Chandler Jones. Overall, it's a really nice block. I, I think the, the part that I really like uh, is the, the part that Rich Incognito pulls. If you guys watch Incognito right here at the left guard position, he's going to pull and he does a really nice job. Uh, the play begins. Again, it's in slow motion. I, I love watching slow motion. It's the way to watch film, in my opinion. Uh, he does a nice job, gets his head to the inside and just kind of hits this guy. Now, Incognito falls, but it's not a big deal. He still does a really nice job but with getting his head to the inside. Uh, another player who did a really good job, um, and I'll be upfront and honest with you guys, if you guys watch my videos, uh, you guys might get the feeling that I don't like Alec Ingold, who is the rookie fullback from Wisconsin, uh, but that's not the case. I actually really like him. Uh, the issue I have, and this is with rookies in general, is uh, oftentimes we see glimpses of them doing good and then we end up just saying hey they should just take the job when realistically he's a rookie he has to fight for that job right we shouldn't just give it to him uh, because of injury at the end of the day keith smith's been in the league for what, four five six years there's a reason he's been in the league for such a long time he's a really really good blocking fullback and especially with this john gruden system um one of the things he likes is that blocking fullback now uh, alec ingold does a really good job uh, he's gonna actually double team uh, i think one of these linebackers and get up to the other guy um very nice job you see him right here him and incognito are going to kind of hit the same guy and then uh, alec ingold's going to get off of him and hit dj swearinger here uh, again it's a nice double team and then he picks his guy up uh, his guy does fall but his guy was tripped uh, alec ingold didn't pancake him which was uh, one of the things that uh, i kind of saw on twitter i saw this play and, and that was something that was mentioned uh, but again very nice block by uh, waller as well as moreau as well uh, just overall it's a nice play it's a it's a power uh, blocking scheme even though you can you know it has a zone aspect to it i like it i think it's a great play and it sets the tone 
All right, sets the tone for the future uh, plays that, hey, you know what? We're going to pound the ball. We're not going to be a passing team. We're not going to be a shotgun team. We're going to line up and run the ball over you guys. And that's one of the things that I like about this. I don't want to move on to uh, the second play of the game. All right, you guys. So on the second play of the game, uh, great job by a number of different people. Uh, I guess the person that I want to give the, the biggest uh, shout out to is the running back, Josh Jacobs. I'll let you guys watch the play in slow motion. And then we'll kind of break it down. We'll, you know, I'll talk about some of the things I like about it. Uh, overall, very, very nice job. Uh, not just by Jacobs reading what he reads but just the lineman you know it's a zone blocking uh, which i love i think zone blocking is always the way to go over power blocking uh, that's just my personal opinion right other people might have a different opinion but jacobs man he picks up eight yards on the second play of the game and this is some of the stuff that i like about this offense you know it's it's versatile there's so many different things we can do uh, keeping in mind yeah jacobs got the ball on this play but you know we can bring in doug martin we can bring in jalen richard we have so many different things we can do you know we have darren waller who's another weapon ab didn't even play tyra williams again a lot of good things uh, in my opinion right um one of the blocks that i like again is trent brown and foster Moreau. you got both these guys up here on the screen in slow motion, you're going to see what I personally like, and that is the fact that they're going to block these two guys and just push them downwards, right? Uh, right here, you see that Trent Brown gets his hands on this defensive lineman, and this is one of the things I really like about the zone blocking scheme, which is the defense have has their gap, right? Every defensive guy has their gap, uh, but not on every player are they going to be able to uh, win their blocks and, and stay within their gap, right? If they are, they'll stop this play. But if one guy messes up and the running back reads it correctly, this play can pop, right? Uh, for example, this play is an outside zone play right here. It's, a, it's an inside zone as far as the blocking scene by the offensive lineman, but it's an outside run, right? Uh, let's say these two guys end up going to the inside. Josh Jacobs will just take this around here and take it. But the fact that these two guys are setting the edge, what's happening is Josh Jacobs is going to run the ball once he realizes the edge is set, he's going to start making his reads to the inside, to the inside, and just kind of see what hole opens up. Now, if none of the holes open up and, and this uh, this backside defensive end is able to just come down, he'll make the play. And that's where the zone gets stopped. If every guy just fills their gap and does their what they're supposed to, uh, the play will get stopped. But as you're going to see, Josh Jacob reads this play very, very, very well. And this is what I really like about him. You know, he quickly realizes that the hole out here is stopped. There's a lot of stuff going on inside here. And just to make the reads and cut it back. And this is what I like about Moreau and Trent Brown's block. You see that Brown has his guy uh, hooked, right? You see his arm right here. Uh, it looks like it could be a hold it's not and then Moreau does the same thing he pushes his guy to the inside great job because uh, you have this backside guy coming down I think that's Terrell Suggs um, he could make the play right here but Jacobs is just too quick he's gonna just get through that hole a very nice job by Jacobs just finding that little crease getting through there the DN kind of makes a tackle he kind of misses Jacobs still picks up another uh, three yards after uh, I guess that's Chandler Jones after Chandler Jones initially wraps him up Again, these are the types of things that I really, really, really like within this offense. So another thing that I liked about the first six plays when our first string offense was out there was the fact that Carr was not in shotgun. I mean, he was on the third play of the game, but uh, for the most part, he, he wasn't, right? And I like that because I think Carr being under center is what we should be doing. You know, at the end of the day, uh, Carr being under center can allow our offensive line to be less predictable, right? And I think it'll help the tackles out. It'll help uh, the tight ends out because when Carr's in shotgun, for the most part, it's going to be a throw, right? I mean, he wouldn't be in shotgun if, if it wasn't the case. Uh, and another thing I like is the fact that we have two tight ends and we have Waller down here. We have uh, Morrow up here. Morrow up here. Uh, no, I like that. I think having more tight ends in uh, is the way to go, right? You can get these guys to come in. Uh, Colton Miller also does a great job picking up this uh, linebacker again. It's the zone blocking, right? Uh, you pick up the guy that's that's in your zone. Uh, and again, uh, you know, Richie Incognito does a good job. He hooks his guy, uh, which is what the left tackle and, and tight end should be doing as well. But uh, again, it's a zone. So if you can't hook, uh, the best thing to do is just push him outwards. Because uh, if Colton Miller pushes his guy outwards and Richie Incognito hooks his guy, uh, there would be a small little crease right here if the 
if the play does not work. You know, LaShawn McCoy was one of those backs that, uh, you know, he would cut it back and forth, back and forth. He'll find a small little crease, boom, so he'll score a touchdown. That's what the zone does, and, and that's why I like the zone. I think it's the way to go. Now, as you guys can see right here, uh, the defense lineman does end up shifting back, filling his gap, and Jacobs just does a really nice job. Uh, Moreau keeps pushing his guy uh, downwards, and then you have the guard as well getting up to the uh, linebacker, which, again, that's that's the that's the block right there that's, that sets this running play up. Right guard is able to move 92 a pretty decent way. Um, very nice play. And I want to move forward and talk about the third play of the game. All right, guys. So the third play of the game was once again a running play, handing the ball off to Josh Jacobs. Now, this play came out of the shotgun formation. Uh, we'll watch the play, and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit, uh, just discussing some of the things that happened. Uh, again, we'll watch it in slow motion, just like all the other plays. I'll let it go, and then uh, I'll put it into the slow motion in just a second. Uh, one thing I do like about this play is uh, Carr did flip the play. As you guys see, Josh Jacobs was lined up on one side uh, and he flips the play. Now, most of these plays have the option to flip the play or, or whatever it may be. Uh, very nice play. Um, some nice blocking by a, a couple of these players. Again, we'll break it down just a little bit. Um, very nice vision, cutback ability that Josh Jacobs is showing. Keep in mind, this is his first NFL experience. He's a rookie. He's going to improve so much. And it really excites me how good he's going to be in a couple of years. You know, um, as the play begins, I want you guys to watch Richie Incognito because he has a great block on this defensive tackle. Uh, he flat out puts him down. Now, uh, he's kind of off balance, as you guys can see, but he should have finished that block right there. He doesn't. It's still a really nice block. He does his job. Um, go back. I want to show you guys a, a couple of the other blocks as well. Uh, Trent Brown does a nice job as well. So we'll watch Trent Brown and you'll kind of watch him. Uh, he was a little late out of his stance. He got down a little late, but I mean, he blows this guy up and, and he's able to just, just push him. I mean, from the, from the time he made contact, the guy went back about five yards. Very nice block by Trent Brown. Uh, again, you know, the way it's executed, the way the defense doesn't know what's coming, just everything about this play is really exciting, you know, and I, I feel like I don't talk enough about uh, Rodney Hudson because he's always just making the block. Like, literally, every single play that I see Rodney Hudson in, he he wins his block, you know, so I, I don't mention him enough, but he does a great job on this play. He gets his head uh, to the left side, which means that he's trying to get around this way and josh jacobs does a good job reading the the side that hudson's trying to block this uh this linebacker because uh, as the play continues josh jacobs gonna try cutting this back he gets caught from the back uh by this defensive lineman but again josh jacobs vision is very nice in my opinion he does a great job uh, colton does you know he does a pretty good job as well um you know, he, he doesn't stay on his guy as long as he should have. Uh, but again, the, the play, it was a zone play, right? At the at the very least, if Josh Jacobs getting the ball from this side, if he's not able to get to the outside, Josh Jacobs, uh, at the very least, would cut it back all the way this way. Um, Colton should have stayed on his, uh, his block a little bit longer. He doesn't. It's not a huge deal, but... Um, you know the, the guy does disrupt this play 98 does as well but um you know he should have definitely blocked a little bit longer guy misses the tackle but overall it's a nicely designed play you know i, I really like john gruden's offense i feel like some of the things that he has in his offense of course we're not gonna see you know we're not gonna see a lot of the things that gruden's doing until later on you know it might be week three it might be week six he's gonna bring in new concepts and new schemes one of the things I did see in this game was uh, I saw at least two end rounds, which is nice. Of course, Gruden did that last year as well. But, um, you know, end rounds is something that I think always keeps uh, the defense on their toes. So, again, I like that. I like the fact that Gruden's running different things. He's showing new looks. Um, and I like the formations. You know, this is one of my favorite formations. I know it's a very basic, uh, very... Um, you know, th this is a typical formation. If you if you think about it, right, the first and second play uh, to this play, there's not a major difference. I mean, like literally, we have two tight ends in here. We have our offensive lineman in. We have a back, and we have two receivers in. That's literally the same formation we just ran. Um, 
I, I think it's the way to go. You know, don't be too predictable, but at the same time, uh, you know, let your guys, you know, let your guys, rather it's two tight ends, let them get going, right? There's no point of constantly shifting and constantly changing and constantly bringing out your guys, right? Just let them go. With that, I want to talk about the next play. All right, you guys, so the fourth play of the game is going to be that deep pass. Uh, it's a 27-yard gain. I like this play because Carr is just giving his receivers the opportunity to make the play. Carr is going to throw it up to Tyrell Williams down here. Uh, you guys have seen the play. We have a receiver up here. You guys can't really see him. Uh, but this is what I, what I like about our offense. This year, we have the weapons. The first time Carr really has true weapons. Right, Tyra Williams, A B. And the fact he's just going up there and then just taking the shot, literally just lobs it up and, and lets his guy go, you know, go up and, and make the catch. Um, this is what I like and this is what I want to see. Uh, but we're not here for that. We're not here for, to look at these highlights. We're here to get down and, and, and look in the trenches and see kind of what happened. And we'll start with Colton Miller. He, he does a decent job. Um, you know, one of the things he really wanted to do was improve those sacks that he gave up last year. 16 sacks, right? Uh, he's been playing pretty well. Uh, obviously, only six six plays here, but um, his technique looks a little bit better. He does a good job. You know, the the DN falls uh, he falls back in the uh, zone coverage, um, and Colton does a good job realizing realizing that, and then just picking up this defense tackle with Richie Incognito. They do a good job picking this guy up. Uh, that's a super easy block. Uh, but again, you know, that, that's the kind of stuff that I want to see uh, from Miller. I want to see him just keep improving. Uh, and then, you know, you have Trent Brown up here as well, who does a, a really good job as well. Um, you know, Trent Brown's one of those guys that's physical. He's nasty. He's going to just handle most people, right? That's just factually true. He's just bigger. He's stronger than most people. Um, and that's just what it is, right? And then you have, of course, Josh Jacobs in the backfield. You have Alec Engel, the rookie. You have Waller up here, uh, who also is going to be blocking this defensive end. One of the things I like is Alec Engel would block, but he's also running out for a route, right? Uh, I like that because he's a playmaker. We know that he's going to be able to make plays for the Raiders. Now, if he doesn't make our team right away, he's going to hit the practice squad. And Gruden's going to pay to keep him on the practice squad. He's not going to let him leave. Um, you know, people have talked about the fact that if Alec Ingold does, uh, if, you know, the Raiders want to bring him onto the practice squad, a different team might sign him. I don't know if that's necessarily true because there's a lot of fullbacks out there. You know, let's just be honest. And it's a fullback. It's not like it's such a important uh, job or, or responsibility. Some teams don't even use fullbacks anymore. Right. Um, and I get he's a playmaker and, and teams want that. But teams also want that fullback that can block. Right. And they don't want rookies. They want those veterans. Um, the fullback's just that position is kind of dying. But uh, Alec Ingold, I like the fact he runs out for a route. Josh Jacobs is a good job uh, with, you know, no one's coming in his gap. And he's just kind of helping out Darren Waller in case Waller loses his block. Um, and then at the end, he kind of slips out as well. You'll, you'll kind of see it. You know, I, I personally think there's a good chance uh, Josh Jacobs is going to have uh, 200 plus carries, 50 plus catches. If it's not this year, it'll be next year. I think he's going to have a lot of these plays where maybe Carr doesn't throw this ball. Instead, Josh Jacobs slips out and Carr just checks it off to him. Um, because as you guys can see, Josh Jacobs right about here is going to start taking off to run this route. Um, right about there, he takes off. Um, again, it's going to be interesting, right? I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited as well. Uh, with that, let's move right into the next play. All right, you guys. So this play is the fourth play of the game. Um, I'm sorry, this is Josh Jacobs' fourth rushing uh, attempt, and this one only gets one yard. So the first one went for six yards, the second one went for eight yards, and the third one went for six yards. Uh, the fourth one only picked up one yard, um, and essentially Chandler Jones right here is going to make the tackle now. Um, this play was called a certain way, and in my opinion, Derek Carr does check, and he, he says that this play is good to run. To to go right um i think he had the option to maybe check out of this player or maybe do something else but based off of the way uh you know I, i've seen him make this you know that exact uh, motion and it, i think it means that we're going to just run the play that was called now if you guys watch chandler jones he goes unblocked and he ends up just tackling josh jacobs 
you know, the play wasn't going to work from the start from the start just because uh, Chandler Jones does go unblocked. But at the same time, uh, there's a lot of positive blocks within this play. And I think Trent Brown has a really, really nice block. He gets upfield and just drives his guy back. You know, and again, this is why I love Trent Brown. You know, he does a good job doubling and then boom, he's going to get up to the next level uh, right there. And then he just drives his linebacker back. You know, he, he gets off screen. That's how far he drives him back. And uh, again, these are the types of things I like about Brown. He's so big and he's so strong. Uh, but him and Debbie, I think they'll they'll be able to do a good job uh, while Gabe Jackson's out because they're already able to double and, and then Brown's able to get up to the next level. Um, and honestly, if if uh, if this guy was not there, if Chandler Jones was not there, the play could have maybe popped. Obviously, there was still one other guy, but uh, it was a field play in my opinion from the start i think someone missed their block uh, or, or maybe you know maybe it was waller because waller kind of comes backside and you know between him and miller i don't think they should have blocked it that way um you know if waller did in my opinion let's say he blocked the guy right across from him if he were to block uh dj swearinger here josh jacobs ends up making Challen jones miss all right so let's just assume darren waller blocks this guy uh, josh jacobs is going to make Chandler Jones miss at least initially he makes a miss or uh, right there I don't think uh, Chandler Jones would have necessarily tackled him I think Josh Jacobs would have been able to slip but the fact that Darren Waller ends up blocking the same guy that's lined up across Colton Miller it kind of makes me believe he was the one that did not uh, make the correct block but again we don't know unless we have the all 22 you know we can kind of see the reaction of these other guys but with this camera angle we're just not able to really see what happens uh, but again very nice play uh, as far as the design i think we just got to clean up that one piece uh, to kind of see who made that mistake uh, i like this offense you know i really really like it this was the fifth play the fourth run you know if we run the ball uh, four out of the first five plays i think we win a lot of games because that means it's working Right, if we run the ball and we get a yard and we run the ball again and get another yard, we're not going to keep running it. Right, We're going to start throwing the ball a little bit more or at least change it up a little bit. And I want to show you guys the last play of the game or the last play of at least the first ringers, uh, which was Carr's 13-yard touchdown pass to Ryan Grant. Now, uh, we won't watch the whole entire play um, as far as him catching the ball because I don't really care about that. I really just want to watch the offensive lineman the, and how the defensive lineman react, kind of how the play is designed and just stuff like that. So with that, let's get into the last play of the first string offense. All right, you guys. So uh, here's the last play with the first string offense is the sixth play of the game. One thing you're going to notice with this offensive line is car is going to stay very, very, very clean. I mean, there's going to be absolutely no pressure. And it starts with Trent Brown and Colton Miller. And they're the anchors of this offensive line. So it's going to be important. If Carr is going to have space to throw, those two guys have to set the edge, right? They have to allow Carr to be able to step up uh, right or, or to the left or, or whatever it is, right? Um, it's a nicely designed play. You know, I think one of the things that often happens, especially with wide receivers and the quarterback, is the quarterback doesn't know what the receiver is doing vice versa this group kind of seems like they're smart and they know exactly what's going on you know last year we had we had a lot of young players once cooper was gone and we had nelson but other than that we had a lot of young players first round or first year players right with colton miller and and uh brandon parker as well but this year it seems different you know we have veterans we have ryan grind we have jj nelson ab tyra williams uh, darren waller's been in the league for what three four years now um you know, and then Colton Miller's second year, Trent Brown's fifth year, Richie Incognito is like 15 years, uh, Rodney Hudson's like six, seven years. All our guys right now are veterans, right? We're not really working with many rookies and many first year players. A lot of these guys are, are in their prime. A lot of these guys are going to be uh, playing well this year. You know, most of them know what's going on. And again, even just between the guard and the center, you know, they do a great job. Now, there's not much pressure because Trent Brown and Colton Miller just flat out handle their guys. I mean, look at this. Colton Miller goes outwards to take on 56. You know, last year, Colton Miller got his ass kicked right here and, and probably gave up a sack, right? Uh, but he does a good job just sticking with 56, pushing him back a little bit. Um, but that, that would not happen if it wasn't for Trent Brown being able to single block his guy either, right? Trent Brown has a huge impact on, on Colton Miller because if Trent Brown is able to contain his guy and Colton Miller will be able to contain his guy, that means we have three guys that essentially are only going to be taking on two defensive tackles. 
again, you know, this is what I like. You know, it's all about the matchups. If you know your tackles are going to win, you know Rodney Hudson's going to win. Whoever he blocks, he's going to be able to block them. And then between Richie Incognito, who's a pro bowler, and Jordan Debbie, who's a veteran, you know, I really like our offensive line. I really do. I, I know Gabe Jackson not being in kind of sucks, uh, but I think having Rodney Hudson kind of uh, anchor leading at least not anchoring but leading that offensive line unit i mean in this play for example he helps out jordan debbie who really has kind of been like a journeyman right he hasn't been in the league for a long time um but he hasn't started a lot he's been in the league for like four five six years but he hasn't played a lot he hasn't started he's kind of you know played center he's kind of played guard he's kind of went all around he's been uh you know the sixth offensive lineman in that sixth set uh, you know, he comes in as a tight end. Um, but Richie Incognito also does a good job, too. He handles his guy, you know. And, and Rodney Hudson's able to help Jordan Debbie out here because Trent Brown's able to take his guy and kick his ass. Colton Miller's able to win and, and kick this guy's ass. And Richie Incognito holds it down as well. Um, and this is kind of how our offense is going to work this year. You know, we're going to have a lot of, of double teams here. But could you guys just imagine if we had Gabe Jackson? Like, Gabe Jackson does not need help. There's almost no one he can't handle. Gabe Jackson did well against Aaron Donald. There's almost no one he can't can't block, right? If you can block Aaron Donald, you can block a lot of people. Trent Brown, same thing. He's able to block Aaron Donald as well. And, you know, it's it's been shown a number of times. You know, I showed it on my film breakdown of Trent Brown. Um, you know, I, I think our offensive line group this year, I think our offense is going to be very special. I just, I have a lot of hopes for this offense from the offensive line to the receivers and i don't focus much on the receivers you know if you guys watch my my videos you guys know i don't really care about the receivers uh what i care about is the offensive line because we're gonna get as far as the offensive line unit takes us Derek carr is gonna get as far as this offensive line unit takes us that's truth you know at the end of the day a quarterback offensive line corners and defensive ends those are the four positions that really really matter I, I guess it's actually uh, nine positions because offensive line is not a real position. It's more of a unit, right? There's five of them. Uh, but again, I'm excited, man. You guys should be super excited too. I want to know what you guys think about our line. I want to know, you, I know what you guys think about this video. Did you guys enjoy this video? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, last time I did a video that was kind of long, you, I, had, I had a lot of good feedback from you guys. Uh, one comment in particular, uh, which I really appreciated, uh, was you know and it's truth you know at the end of the day i want to get down and show you guys some of the small details you know if you guys want to have a have me talk about these interesting storylines and you know that kind of stuff you know that's like for espn and for fox that's for them right to take, do those hot takes that's not me you know at the end of the day i started my channel breaking down film you know two three years ago when i first started I wanted to break down film because I felt like the Raiders uh, didn't really have someone that broke down film. Uh, of course, you know, we had a couple of people here and there. You can go on Twitter, The Athletic or whatever, you know, subscription it is. Every All these people have their own guys, but there's really no one out there that does it for free. Uh, so this is what I wanted to build my channel on and I kind of want to get back into it. I want to start uh, showing more film and kind of getting away from the hot takes, even though uh, I like talking Raiders. Right? I love the Oakland Raiders, but um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, share, comment, subscribe if you're not subscribers. Follow me on all the social media platforms. I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate your guys' support and I'll see you guys next time with the Game Film Breakdown.